thank you for joining us for this another episode of ECCB Connects. This week, we bring you part two of the ECCB Distinguished Alumni Series, where Dr. Valda Henry continues her discussion on the happiness factor in employee engagement. To be an engaged person says, I am here to give my very best. I often say, if we do not give our very best, you know who we are cheating? Ourselves. Not the organization. We think it's the organization. But it's ourselves. Because if you know, and because you, even if the other people think you're working, you know the truth. So at the end of the day, when you're in your quietude of yourself, you know you are not giving your best. 22% strongly agree the leadership has a clear direction of the organization. That is less than a quarter, you know. A quarter is 25. 15 strongly agree the leadership makes them enthusiastic about the future. Getting even less. 13% strongly agree leadership communicates effectively the organization. See where that dwindling. We started off with what? 22. We came to 15, then we ended with 13. Concerning what? The leadership. And folks, leadership is not just at the top. Eh? I imagine my supervisory training, I don't call it supervisory training, I call it developing the first level managers. Because supervisors are truly first level managers and leaders. They're the first branch. In fact, the studies continue to show that if the supervisory level is poor, forget it. The rest will not happen. If at the supervisory level you cannot engage your employees to give up their best, the organization is going to falter. There is an urgency for leaders to define and convey their vision more clearly, that's what it says, rally their employees around it, and have little belief in their company, so that, because employees have such little belief in their leadership. You have to get that. And you know something about trust? Trust is difficult to get back. If you lose it, what do I need to do to be a better leader to my people? What do I need to do to engage my people more? I tell you, I know it takes a little courage, you know, because very few of us, as we get older, we hate to say sorry or I've made a mistake. But folks, I tell you, these are two important things to be able to say. But folks, if you don't believe in you, Who's going to believe in you? So when you say others don't believe in you, do you yourself believe in yourself? And people can read whether you believe in you, you know, because it shows. And some of us are afraid to be confident, but folks, listen to me. I love Marianne Williams, who said, don't, you know, what people are afraid of is our light, not our darkness. Of when we're in our darkness, who cares? When you're in darkness, nothing can thrive in a negative environment. You cannot be your best. But in a positive environment, what happens? You thrive. So people are sometimes afraid of our light. And what we try to do is dim our light to make others comfortable. Do not ever do that. Shine brightly and give them permission to shine. To say to them that that brightness is not just for me. That brightness exists for all of us. All of us can be engaged employees at ECCB. All of us. And yes, we have, there may be problems all over. I'm not naive to that. But are these problems insurmountable? Is there no way out for us? Of course there is a way out. And who, who leads the way out? Who? Hmm? Employee engagement in the Caribbean, and I have a lot of data there. Job satisfaction, when we look at it, only one company in that group of five that we have put up for you, five or six of them, six of them, employee satisfaction was higher than 70%. And the assembly satisfaction talks about my personal happiness at work. Now, if we're not happy at work, we really don't give our best. Feel good working about the company. Yes, we now have a few more feeling good. But what we found that that was correlated not with what was happening internally, but on the perception of the place outside. 
So when, if they felt that the place was highly respected and people felt the place was known for good service, they felt good working. It's like at ECCB. I mean, ECCB is a prestigious institution to work at. Everybody wants to work there. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be there. And then when you got there, some people say, oh, shoes. I thought they was going to be so happy and everything, but Lord, look, some problems here. Some of the same problems that I ran away from. And people just don't understand. But if people have your institution in high esteem, people start feeling good about it, but it's external. It's not internal. Next slide. Is it a good place to work? Again, about three of the six 50% say yes. More than 70, good place. Is it a happy place? The good did not correlate to a happy place. So although persons were saying that it was a good place to work in, in many of the instances, the majority also said it was not a happy place. And what was the good? The goodness was based on the fact that they had a secure job. Salaries were paid on time. There were sometimes great benefits and so on. All the good things. When you ask them, Are you, is it a happy place to work? They said no. And when we started delving into the reason, two key factors came up. Trust and communication. People did not trust their leaders. They did not think their leaders had their best interests at heart. And when we're in that space, can we give anything to these people? We put up one wall, second wall, a third wall, a fourth wall, a fifth wall, a sixth wall, till we can't even be found. All the person is seeing is a wall around them because I have hidden myself so safe that that person cannot touch me. And in the process, what have I done? I have isolated myself. I've made up myself a prisoner even to my own life. And then communication. People don't communicate. People hear things first time on the radio before they hear it in the workplace. Mm. You know, they don't know what's happening here, there, and everywhere. So communication, these are two big things. The trust factor and the community. Even when the organization provided all the material good things, best salaries, good working conditions, good benefits, and all of that, where people did not feel that there was trust, and they were coming, and they were also felt respected. That also came up, disrespect. Those persons considered the place not a happy place. Again, when you ask people about, do you know about the vision, the mission, the strategy, some of them said yes. Many of them were aware. But we also had quite a bit of people saying, there's some aware, but I don't agree. <laughs> <laughs> Even where some of them said they were involved, when you, like we did the focus group, they said, like, yes, we're involved because they come to tell you after they decided it, but you got no chance to make an input. And that too is a problem. Because if I am to really follow you and to be part and parcel, I have to be part of that vision. I have to understand that vision. I have to be aware of my own role in it. And I have to feel that I have, a, as he said, listen, that I can communicate something. And I don't expect all the time that what I communicate goes. Eh? I always say that to people. But at least I know I got a listening ear and somebody considered it. And so, because everything we propose, really, truly, be honest, everything we propose cannot be accepted, can it? No. But we had the opportunity to propose. We have to have faith in the people who we lead. We must. Because if we don't have faith, you do, not also, you do not give them the opportunity to be their best. And that's how we get engagement. Giving people the opportunity to be their best. And when we get the opportunity to be our best, what happens? We get a sense of fulfillment. We get a sense of achievement. And with that, we get a sense of peace and confidence that I can do all things. The crisis strengthens me. And that way, we become our own happiness factor rises. That you don't even have to ask us to do. We see it is, needs to be done, and we get it done. We don't need somebody over our back saying, what have you done? I know. 
We know what the deadline is and we work within our deadlines. We need help. We are not afraid to seek help. And truly, that is what it's about. The lessons. Authentic, credible leaders. That's a key lesson, really, in terms of engagement. Effective communication channels, necessary. Clearly defined vision, missions, and strategy. Focus on recruiting the right employees. Redeploy employees where you have to, to ensure that there are no square pegs in wrong holes. Clearly define your jobs and your performance standards that are aligned. Because sometimes we have jobs that are not aligned at all to what we want to achieve, you know. So the people may do excellently, but does it translate up? It doesn't. So there needs to be alignment. And we need to have challenging work and responsibilities with the appropriate level of authority. So when we delegate something to someone, let's give them a little authority. Delegation is not abdication of responsibility. So when we delegate, well, that doesn't mean we abdicate our responsibility for it. It remains. But we must give people the authority to do it and then we check on it. But a little dark side, caution to that. Status quo, you have to ensure that, you know, we don't just get stuck to doing things as is, you know, the status quo. Sometimes we push employees to burn out, so we have to recognize that there is a work-life balance, and we've been speaking about that, the importance of family, the importance of, you know, of taking time out. And unfair, um, sometimes some people, and oftentimes that happens, people who are loud and you know, confident and outgoing, the extroverts sometimes get by on little merit. While the introvert who is truly, truly the worker sometimes gets overlooked. You know, again, as leaders, we have to be able to garner the best out of all our people whether they're extroverts or introverts, get them out. Mm -hmm. So again, employee engagement, as we say, is influenced by several, several factors. But ultimately, a lot of it comes from moi, mm -hmm. from me. And again, and if we have engaged employees, what happens? There's ownership. And if we own something, what happens? If I own something and I believe it's mine, what do I do? We take pride. Think of our homes. How many people have their homes, their own homes? The first day you walk into that home, for even while the building, every time you go and see it, you get a sense of pride. But the first day you're moving into that home, well, how do you feel? Huh? You said, ah, at least they won't. But in Dominica, we have an expression about mal to avai, meaning that people who have worked badly. You say, well, at least I cannot be accused of not working well. This is the fruits of, one of the fruits of my labor. Because in the Caribbean, unlike maybe many other places, owning our own home is a big thing. It's a sense of accomplishment. A sense of achievement is a culmination of all my years of working. And so what happens, most of us take great care of the homes that we have. We have rules, no eating in my, in my living room, no foot on my chairs, this, this, this. And those people who grew up in the earlier time, you know that cabinet that had all those china things? Uh, you couldn't touch it, you couldn't. Uh. And that was because the people took such pride. Huh? And because they owned it, they took care of it. Because they owned it, they didn't need anybody to help them to clean that house. They took pride. That's why Saturday was devoted for cleaning. Same thing with our jobs. If we own it, nobody has to look over our shoulders. If we own it, we do what must be done, no matter what it is and what it takes to get it done. To view any episode of ECCB Connects anytime, any place, at your convenience, check out our YouTube channel, ECCB Connects. We've come to the end of this week's episode of ECCB Connects. Is there a topic you'd like us to cover? Message us on Facebook at ECCB Connects. Join us again next week when we'll be back with another program.